Hi. In this video, I'll share about the nature of anxiety and how to resolve it naturally. Whenever approaching natural healing, it's important to be able to get honest about what is out of balance. For successful holistic healing, we can follow this framework. Remove the aggravating factor or factors, soothe and tone. So we'll be working our way through those steps. Anxiety is basically a generalized state of fear with energy moving up and swirling around. So you will see connections with the root, with grounding, and with the adrenals as we get into this. These tools are also helpful for the anxiety that arises when approaching an inner wound, such as in healing work or, let's face it, intimate relationships. So remember these strategies when approaching those territories. The world has become a high intensity sensory experience that our nervous systems are challenged to keep up with. So anxiety is warranted and we can help our nervous systems acclimate and create a sense of safety for ourselves with the strategies and tools I'll share with you in this video. Let's start by looking at some common aggravating factors. Watching too much news, doom scrolling, spending time with people who aren't a vibrational match for you, comparing yourself with others on social media, limiting exposure to fear porn or straight up taking a media fast may be all you need to resolve anxiety. EMFs or electromagnetic fields also contribute to anxiety. Check out my video on mitigating EMFs for more information on that. I can't really do justice to this topic of anxiety without talking about a concept from the Vedic tradition, which is Anga Banga. I think it might be a Sanskrit onomatopoeia. I mean, it sounds like banging your head against the wall. Anga Banga describes a tendency to stay out of balance. It's characterized by gravitating to things which maintain or aggravate the out of balance state. So you might not want to hear this, but if you have anxiety and you are using caffeine, sugar, and or cannabis, you are probably aggravating the anxiety. Let's talk about each one. Maybe caffeine is obvious, but I feel like people don't know that it stimulates the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline which causes anxiety if there's not a need to fight or flee. I call this fracking the family jewels. In Chinese medicine, the adrenals together with the kidneys, which they sit on top of, are the seat of Zheng. Zheng is the congenital vitality you received from your parents at the moment of conception. You can do things to support Zheng, and avoid things that tax it, but you don't ever really get more of it. Basically, caffeine taps into the jing and uses it up faster. Coffee is especially intense and has the added energetic of being very yin. It's easy to see it as yang because it gives you energy, but it isn't. It is very deep acting, very dark, and it brings life closer to death. I was a barista in my early 20s. I drank my share of coffee. Over the years, I had a couple of friends share with me about their very dark mood and very dark thoughts that compounded as their coffee intake increased. When they quit coffee, it would gradually resolve and they would feel normal and happy again. Then they'd start back with the coffee, and if they gradually increase their intake over time, back would come the dark mood. They both told me it felt like impending doom. They didn't even hang out with each other. This was two distinct examples. 
I know there are plenty of studies saying coffee is good for you, probably paid for by the coffee industry. I'll just say that if you're sensitive and you're having anxiety, quit drinking coffee and see how you feel. Sugar isn't directly a stimulant the way caffeine is, but sugar provides a burst of energy. And when followed by a crash, it can cause the body to release stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline to compensate for the low blood sugar. These hormones can trigger feelings of anxiety, restlessness, and even panic. And then adrenaline in the bloodstream causes the liver to turn stored glycogen into glucose, raising blood sugar levels to provide the energy to get out of dangerous situations. So you can see the positive feedback loop that perpetuates itself, causing stress and anxiety with sugar. Also, consuming high amounts of sugar on a regular basis can disrupt the balance of neurotransmitters in your brain, including serotonin. Serotonin helps regulate mood. Imbalance in serotonin levels are linked to anxiety and depression. Also important to note, high blood sugar levels are inflammatory in the body, which causes all kinds of other trouble. So best to keep your sugar intake to a minimum. I prefer natural sweeteners like local raw honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, and dehydrated cane juice, which all retain nutritional benefits and kind of balance out the expense of ingesting sugar. You gotta have some sweetness. Okay, relaxation over time will help decrease inflammation in the body and anxiety, which now brings us to cannabis. I know a lot of folks feel supported by weed to manage their anxiety, help them sleep, and manage pain. Cannabis is an ally medicine. It can align with your intentions for its use and do a great job meeting you there. And if you're smoking it, it moves energy up through the system. And what is anxiety but too much energy swirling around up? in the head and above. Now ingesting cannabis is a bit different and you can play with that and see what you notice. I have a number of friends who if they accidentally ingest it, they will have a horrible bad trip for hours and hours until it wears off. One friend had that experience with a CBD gummy that she took for insomnia. That was a rough night. I know folks get really attached to that ally medicine, and she is like a jealous lover, so she gets attached to you too. And it can be hard to shift the relationship, especially if you feel like it's helping your anxiety. But what if you quit and the anxiety went away? Would it be worth it? Something to think about. Teaching the body to relax without cannabis, using other tools like breathing practices, energy work, Yoga Nidra, and earthing is a great place to start. Okay, I think you get it about the aggravating factors. Work towards eliminating them. Moving on to some practical strategies for soothing the body to let it know that this moment is safe. We'll start with a few especially useful in a high, in a high anxiety state like verging on a panic attack. So first, gently rub the fronts of your thighs with your hands. Have your hands be flat, relaxed, and use the whole hand to stroke gently up and down the fronts of the thighs. This lets your hip flexors know that there is no reason to tense up. The hip flexors tense up, ready to run or fight. And this is just letting them know there's no reason to run or fight. You can relax, just letting the body know. And then that relaxation can move even deeper into the psoas, deeper in the abdomen. Next is hum. Hum. Humming stimulates the ventral vagus nerve, which is the social engagement system where we can be present and problem solve and connect. Anxiety can activate the dorsal vagus nerve, which looks like freeze state or collapse. 
so hum or sing to switch back into that social engagement system. Eye contact also works really well for this. If there's someone around who you trust who is calmer than you, see if you can get some eye contact going to bring you back. Next is shake. <sighs> When mammals are wounded or shocked, they go find another mammal and attune with their more calm nervous system to help them come back and shake it off. So be mindful when doing this to actually shake it off and don't get stuck in a groove of shaking. You wanna really feel it like moving out of your system. And here's another situation where it's super helpful to have someone else around who you trust who's calmer than you are. So, having them present you could hold hands or hug that might help but even without touching you can bring your awareness to the calmness in their nervous system and like bring that back into your own system as a reference and that will help support your body to shake off the excess energy feel your body in contact with solid support ideally directly on the earth. So if you're feeling anxious and you can go outside and lay on the ground, definitely do that. Super helpful to just bring your awareness to the direct support of whatever is supporting you solidly underneath, whether you're standing or sitting or lying down on the floor or the couch or a bed or the earth, just connect with that, po that point of contact and receive the support that's here in the moment. Okay, another fun tool is heel tapping. Um, this practice is sometimes called dropping the fence post and best done outside on the ground. Like this. Next is emotional freedom technique or EFT, which is also called tapping. This is a whole system. I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. So first we wanna find the karate chop point on the outside edge of the hand, which is this kind of divot right under the pinky finger. It's really like the beginning of this line of the palm there. So we're gonna hit it against the other hand to activate that point. And so the first thing we're gonna do is name the feeling and maybe the reason if you know the reason and offer ourselves unconditional acceptance. So it goes like this. Even though I feel anxious when I sit down to make videos, I totally and completely love and accept myself. <sighs> Even though I feel nervous when I make videos, I completely and totally love and accept myself. Even though I'm scared of getting it wrong, I totally and completely love and accept myself. <sighs> okay, so that's doing a couple of things. We're like getting the feeling stirred up, acknowledging the feeling, acknowledging that we're not the feeling by naming the feeling, maybe the reason, and separating it from ourselves and our unconditional lovability. And then once you've done that step, then we move on to the other tapping points and shift the focus of the language. So the tapping points are here, 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 and I'll keep going. So I love making videos. Making videos is fun. People want to hear what I have to say. Even if I get it wrong, I can refine it later. Making videos is fun. I love making videos. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the inside of the middle section of each finger. Making videos is exhilarating. Making videos is fun. I love sharing my knowledge and wisdom with people. Yay, YouTube. Yay, Rumble. Videos are awesome. I'm great at making videos. <laughs> making videos is fun. <sighs> so 
So that's just a brief overview of EFT. There is a ton of information on this technique out there. Um, lots of people teaching on it. And if your anxiety is primarily financial, you may benefit from tapping into wealth coaching with my friend Lisa at sunwoman.com. And I'll link that in the comments if you want to find out more about tapping emotional freedom technique, EFT. I love tapping because you, it can be subtle. You can do it like while you're driving or on the subway or at work, you could get away with it. Um, another really subtle trick that I love is holding the index finger, just simply holding the index finger with the other hand can help alleviate anxiety. Switch, just be present with your one hand holding the other finger. The index finger is related to fear. So just letting your fear be held in your presence and in your body. I like that one because it's subtle. Okay, tuning into the breath. Any amount you can slow or deepen the breath will help. If you can let more air out than in, that can help. You can flutter your lips like a horse does. And that helps release excess energy similar to shaking. Breathe in slowly. And breathe out slowly. That can just really help. So simple. We'll get into some more breath practices in a little bit. But first, moving on to some remedies. So remedies bridge the steps of soothing and toning. A few homeopathics. Aconite is for emotional shock. So if you've been anxious since receiving shocking news or some other shocking experience, like a physical injury, aconite is your remedy excellent in acute situations. So if you get a phone call or see a social media post or like I said injure yourself go to aconite first. It will help peel a layer so that you can be present with what needs to be attended to in the moment. Arsenicum is for anxiety that's worse at night and includes a fear of death, a fear of getting cancer, and a fear of being alone. People who benefit from arsenicum really want to have someone else in the room and they like sips of hot tea because it's comforting. Argent night is a remedy for worst case scenario thinking. If you are always tracking the exit strategy, this remedy might be for you. And it really likes sugar. So if you have a sugar thing, this might be a good remedy to help resolve that. A final homeopathic for worry, the kind of worry that you think will make you lose your mental faculties is calc carb. Calc carb is especially good for insomnia, especially with cold feet and a sweaty head. So if you find yourself up in the night, not able to sleep, worrying, 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 thinking you're gonna lose your mind with worry and your feet are cold and your head is sweating, you know calc carb is your girl. Okay, there are many more homeopathic remedies, but for now, we'll move on to flower essences. Mimulus is for specific fears that you can identify, like fear of germs, fear of heights, fear of going to the dentist. Aspen is for unidentified general fear and anxiety. So if there's just like a general state of anxiety and there's nothing really to attach it to, aspen is great for that. White chestnut bud is for circular thinking or looping thoughts that can be an aspect of anxiety, and that would go well with calc carb. Corn essence is super grounding and connects us with the earth. So if you're challenged to bring your awareness to that point of contact where you're receiving support, corn would be a really good remedy for that. 
Rescue Remedy or Five Flower Formula is great for acute shock and trauma like aconite and also great for long-term stress and anxiety when diluted to a dosage strength. I'll link the Flower Essence Resource Guide below for more on that. Once you have created a foundation of resource in yourself, you can move towards toning the system, pendulating between the calm that you now have access to and states of higher activation will strengthen the resilience of your nervous system. Anything linking breath and movement with awareness is excellent practice. So martial arts, yoga, tai chi, qigong, or any Western workout routine if you focus on your breath matching the movement. My friend Lizzie offers an excellent online membership for home workouts with a focus on toning the nervous system. I'm fortunate to get to work out with her live here in Asheville every week. I'll link her website in the comments too. Breath practices in general will help strengthen the nervous system to be more resilient to stress. I'm not talking about the high intensity breathwork practices that are so popular these days, though those have their place as well. But a simple seated breathing meditation practice for five minutes twice a day. You want to focus on even inhales and exhales, like a four count inhale and a four count exhale, for example, or a longer exhale. If there's a lot of excess energy in the system, you could do a four count inhale and a six count exhale. I recommend in and out through the nose. If there is a lot of excess energy and you want to do the lip fluttering or sighing with some sound that kind of like activates the humming element, the vagus nerve. So if there's a lot of excess energy and you want to do the lip fluttering or sighing like, <sighs> that can be really helpful. Um, but once there isn't, excess energy that needs to move out of the system, just focus on that even four count inhale and four count exhale. And the longer you do it, the longer you can make that count, right? So as you settle into your breathing practice, you could lengthen it to six or eight, um, but even inhales and exhales through the nose. Alternate nostril breath is another great practice and you can learn how with a couple of videos that I made for you. Meanwhile, tell yourself kind things, think kind thoughts, and if you would like more support with your self-care, pick up the Get Your Shit Together checklist, which I'll link in the comments with all of the other resources. May you be calm, may you be well, and blessings on your way.